When I bought my first digital camera, the first thing I did was Google the most optimal settings for it. Many of the good looking people on YouTube recommended very specific settings, such as changing the color space or reducing contrast and sharpness, but no explanations to why those settings needed to be set. I think understanding the why will clear up some of the misconceptions about camera native files, also known as RAW files. Just a side note, I'll have to keep saying RAW, but remember that I mean camera native files. After all, each camera model produces a different file and it's not some global, open, interchangeable format. I think RAW is misleading and confusing. But hey, if that helps to get the point across, I'll continue saying RAW. They're camera native files, you guys. Pedantry aside, I can pretty much sum up the entirety of this video in one sentence. Color space setting, sharpness, contrast, saturation settings, and the white balance setting has no effect on the data that is captured by the sensor while capturing RAW files. Now, if you don't believe me, and uh, I hope you don't, stick around for a few minutes while I climb down the ladder of image making. I have already dissected the camera native RAW file in another video, where I talked about the cause of pink highlights. The first part might be beneficial to watch as well, but a lot of it will be repeated here and there. Repetition is the illusion of knowledge, after all. Let's start from the beginning, the camera. When you turn on the RAW mode in your camera, you usually have a choice. RAW only, RAW plus JPEG, or JPEG only. This is the important bit. Even though you select RAW only, the camera will embed a JPEG preview image into the file, so you can, well, preview it. Otherwise, as raw data file is data, you could not preview it in good faith. So the camera takes the settings that it would apply to a JPEG and applies those settings to the raw preview image. That preview is a formed image, but a raw data file is just captured data. It is very important to disconnect these two things, as it is where most of the confusion stems from. So the settings, namely white balance, color profile, picture settings, will be applied to the preview of the raw file, but not its data. Some of the settings you set in camera will be written as a note for the photo editing software, but in no way will it affect the actual captured data. Okay, let's put that to the test. First, let's take a baseline shot of this Polaroid. I have set the ISO to 6500K, color space to sRGB, and creative style to standard with the default settings. Now let's randomize these settings. I'll completely break the white balance setting by going to custom and doing whatever it takes to make it look as weird as possible. Same with the creative style. Let's increase the contrast, increase the saturation and increase the sharpness. Lastly, let's swap to Adobe RGB. Now you can see that these two files are both raw and they differ incredibly. Let's take these files into Darktable and let's start digging. First thing you'll notice that these two files still look incredibly different everywhere in Darktable. And that is because Darktable uses the embedded previews that are embedded in the camera native raw file. Why? Because it's faster. Let's keep it that way. Okay, let's load up the two photos into Darkroom. What I will do first is I will get rid of as many modules as possible. These modules help us get from data to an image, but we want to be as close to the data part as possible. Some modules are mandatory, so we won't be able to disable them. We will be looking at nonsense for a bit, but bear with me. Let's take a snapshot and let's move to the other photo. Let's disable all the modules once again. Uh, you can see where this is going. I can enable the snapshot and we can do a one-to-one -one comparison. Besides the moving curtain, these two photos are identical. 
We can even zoom in on the colorful part. Take another snapshot and compare it to the other one. See, no difference. We can even enable the white balance modules and make sure they're set to D65. Still the same. We can also enable the color calibration module. Just make sure the values are identical. 4637. That's daylight. 4637. And that's how you arrive at an identical result. And there it is. We have two identical photos that were captured with completely different settings. And they both look exactly the same. Just a reminder, all these settings will affect your videos and JPEG files. And you have to absolutely nail them in order to preserve as much information as possible. For raw capturing, instead of a conclusion, I'll give you a recommendation. Adjust these settings to your own taste to get previews that closely match your raw developing style. If you like contrast, give it a boost. If you like saturated colors, increase the saturation. Most importantly, feel free to keep the white balance on your camera to auto, unless you're one of those people who carry a gray card in their wallets.